what I wanted to do for you today, I think that yesterday I said that I, the next one I did, I was going to deal with the psychological and the emotional damage um, that um, any kind of abuse in your childhood does to you. Because yesterday I went through the effect on your system and we talked about the nervous system. But I've had such a full on week, I just, I couldn't actually face that today. So I'm going to do a much easier topic for you. And I'm going to, hi, thanks for joining. Um, I'm going to talk to you about something I've been working on um, and I've put together and I'm actually um, about to launch a webinar and a, a whole new program. And the whole basis of it is the five shifts that you need to make to heal from CPTSD. And what I've done from all of my experience and the work I've done with my clients, I've actually identified the five major things that have people stuck. And I'm just going to talk those through with you now. So these are the beliefs that I believe you need to shift to rapidly heal from your CPTSD, even in the next 12 weeks, which is what my clients do. And these are amongst others, but these are the five major beliefs that they shift to actually start working with me and to even believe that this is possible. So let me just talk these through with you. So the first one that has everyone stuck is this belief that it must take a long time, that it will take a long time, even that it's impossible that you'll spend a lifetime trying, that it's not possible, and this is, this is totally false. Um, I know it's totally false because of the work that I do, because of the way my clients heal, and because my whole focus is on helping them move from where they are now to where they want to be in 12 weeks. Now the reason, the reason you think it's going to take so long is because of your other therapy experiences, things that you've been told, things that you've been taught, things that you've heard. It's all to do with the traditional approach. And the traditional approach, I'm really going to link these two together then. So let's have a look at the second one where I've said that talk therapy is not the best and the only way. And so let me link these two together for you. So what normally happens You've got this extreme anxiety, you've got all these symptoms, this fear, you know you've got low self-confidence, you're very emotionally unregulated, you have no idea what's going on. So you go to the doctor and the doctor, if he's any good, will talk to you about your past, realize that you're having some kind of trauma response, uh, might refer you, might, might suggest that you have CPTSD, complex post-traumatic stress disorder, depending on what your symptoms are. And then he's going to refer you, if you're lucky, this doesn't happen to everyone, if you're lucky, he's going to refer you for therapy. Most people don't even get referred to a trauma-informed counsellor or therapist. They'll come to me after years when therapy hasn't worked for them, and I'll ask them if the counsellor they were seeing was trauma informed and they have no idea what I'm talking about. So what happens, you go to the doctor and you get referred for some kind of help support, but you're going to be referred for talk therapy, maybe to a, psych um, yeah, to a psychologist, a psychotherapist, some kind of counsellor or um, therapist. And as I said, if you're really, really lucky, and your doctor is switched on enough, you will get referred to someone who has a background in trauma and knows how to deal with trauma because it's very, very specific. But here's the problem. All of, and this kind of links into three, but not quite, but bear with me, these things all go together. All of the responses that you have to trauma, all of the emotional and psychological damage is done in your subconscious. It's done in your subconscious. Your subconscious is, is full of all the negative thoughts, the beliefs, the perceptions that you have about yourself that were put there by your trauma, by, by your abuse. Your abuse was designed to diminish you, to control you, to make you lose your sense of self. That's exactly what happened. And most of you can relate to this even as you hear it, okay? Um, but it didn't happen in your logical conscious mind, it happened in your subconscious. 
in your logical conscious mind, you can say to yourself, I have no idea why I feel like this. I'm an adult now, I'm safe, I'm in my own home, I've got friends, a family, I've got a job. Why do I still feel so worthless? Why am I still so terrified of everything? Why can't I speak up? Why do I always put everyone else first? All of these questions, I know what they are. And the reason is that your subconscious is running your behavior. Those thoughts, feelings, beliefs, perceptions that were lodged there as an abused child when you were vulnerable and powerless, they are what is running your adult life. And they will stay there. What is formed in the subconscious changes, uh, stays there until we change it in the subconscious. So here's the thing, your doctor refers you for talk therapy. Your talk therapy is not directed at your subconscious mind. Your talk therapy is aimed at your logical mind. You already know in your logical mind that you shouldn't feel like this. And I'm not saying that talk therapy doesn't have a place, it does. And I'm sure that some of you feel, more, feel better for having someone to talk to. But where's the major shifts? Where's the healing? Where's, where's the you leave the session and you know you've achieved, achieved X and that next time you go back, your target is to achieve this because you're coming from a different place. It doesn't happen. This is why people end up in talk therapy for years and years and years and they see little or no difference in their condition. But you don't know the difference. This is what's available to you within a state system. Your doctor doesn't refer you to therapy and then say to you, oh, make sure this person is a trauma therapist or doesn't say to you, I've made sure that this person um, has a, is trauma informed. They'll be a really good fit for you. They'll really be able to help you. Your doctor is ticking a box. They're ticking a box and it's not their fault, of course. I'm not saying that, I'm not blaming anyone. I'm just telling you what the system does. He doesn't then say to you, this is what I can offer you, but if you are prepared to invest, if you have the money, if you want to heal faster, if you want to explore holistic methods, these are what is also available. He doesn't do that. So you go to the talk therapy with no understanding at all that the problem is in your subconscious and that the talk therapy is going to be directed to your conscious mind and really is you are going to struggle to heal. This is why you don't need me to point you to evidence. Just think about this. Think about the amount of time and money that you have already spent in talk therapy and think about the people that you know. You know, we know that this is true. You, I'm just putting it into context for you. So that ties together the, the first three beliefs. So the first one is the th one you have to shift is that it has to take a long time. It doesn't. My clients don't take a long time. My focus is 12 weeks. Okay. Um, the second is that talk therapy is the only or the best way. Um, that is absolutely untrue. There is growing evidence and growing support um, for holistic methods and in particular hypnosis. We have to remember that hypnosis is one of the original forms of healing that we had available to us. It's, it's an ancient therapy. It's an ancient way of healing and it's been hijacked um, by modern approaches. And really it's been hijacked by the pharmaceutical industry where you are just given pills, you are not even sufficient um, to, to actually look for alternatives. Um, so that's those three. And obviously, you know, if you follow any of my stuff at all, um, you know how much I talk about how the subconscious is running everything, not the conscious mind. The fourth thing, the fourth belief that you absolutely have to shift, the one you have is that you are not enough. This is, you know, the mind is not that complicated. It's really not. And underlying almost every emotional and mental health issue is this feeling of not being enough, whether it's from abuse or not. You know, as 
as humans, our ego is very, very fragile. It doesn't take a lot to derail us and to make us think that we're not enough. None of us are born that way. As babies, we are all absolutely certain that we are enough. We know that we're going to get our needs met. We know that if we smile, someone's going to smile back at us. If we cry, someone will pick us up. When we're hungry, someone will feed us. We know that we are lovable. We know that if we reach out, we will get our needs met. But that changes. That changes as you start to be able to develop more. The first time you reach out for something you're not supposed to have and someone shouts at you. Just think about this the first time you're walking and someone shouts at you because you're going the wrong way or because you knock something over. All of these start to diminish your fragile ego. And if you are in an abuse situation, your sense of self gets completely decimated. And the one belief you have to have, and I know for many of you from where you're coming from now, where you really, you see yourself as being totally worthless. So many of you are dealing with feelings of a lack of worth, no value, no self-confidence, self-esteem, unable to put yourself first, constantly pleasing others, a fear of abandonment, and so many, a fear of a craving for intimacy and yet a fear of it. So many feelings and thoughts that you're dealing with and you have such a negative and toxic relationship with yourself that it's very difficult for you to say, yes, I know that I'm enough. But guys, this is so, so powerful. And even if you don't feel it, my job is when you work with me to move you from this toxic mess of a relationship that you have with yourself to understanding on every level that you are absolutely enough. And even if you don't feel it now, if you can just understand the concept and just say somewhere underneath everything that I feel about myself at the moment, I know that I deserve more. I want more for myself. And I know that I am enough. That's all I need. But that's the belief. You must be prepared to shift that belief that you don't deserve and that everyone deserves more than you do and that everyone else should come first and that you're unimportant and that you need to be not seen, not heard, that you're irrelevant, have no value, have no worth. It's a myth. It's a story that you were sold. And it's a fallacy that is sitting in your subconscious and driving all of your behaviors. And you need, and you will, believe me, when you do this deep work, the deep work that I do with people, you will shift this very, very quickly as you see yourself, probably for the first time, as who you really are. So that's all of those. The next one ties into something that I share quite a lot. Um, and this is all around the fact that you really need to invest. You need to invest in the help that you need to heal. I tell you why. Because you all know that all the information you need is available to you. Everything that you could possibly want to heal is there. You can do a Google search on anything and pull up thousands of results at any time. But the information is not enough. The information does not heal you. Sure, the information is great. It might teach you something. It might make you focus on something. might make you realize something. But guys, change is hard. And there will be challenges. And the people that you think should support you won't support you. And there'll be, there'll be barriers that you put up. You, people get very attached to their identity. It can be hard to let go. And the other thing is all the information that's coming at you, what's relevant? The, the most common thing people say to me is that I want to change, but I don't even know where to start. I have nowhere to start, even with something as simple as placing boundaries and barriers so that you establish a sense of your own value and worth. I suggest that to people and you could go and research so much on this and I know what they're saying when they say, but how do I do it? 
you know, when I try to do it and someone opposes me, I just crumble. I don't know what to do. And this is where working with someone would get you through that, would give you the tools, the techniques, the tactics, pick you up when you fall down, tell you where to start, give you the step-by-step -step process, the strategy. Because me and people like me, we know the process. We know where you need to start. Where you need to start might not be the same as where someone else needs to start. You're all individual. You're all dealing with different things, different circumstances at different stages. People come to me at different stages of their healing. It's totally bespoke. You don't all need the same thing. But no matter where you're at, I know how to help you. And when you tell me you're here and where you want to is to get here, I can craft a bespoke plan to get you to where you need to go. And that plan doesn't have to be set in stone. You know, it evolves as you do, as we realize that we need something else, or we realize, hey, you've, you've gone past that now. And also this is layered, and things might come up that we didn't know were there, especially when we're dealing with the subconscious. My goodness, even my clients who think they really, really understand what they're dealing with, when we work with the subconscious, so much comes up. So much comes up that they just had no idea was there. And that's your problem as well, guys. You, you know, de dealing with talk therapy that speaks to your conscious mind, there's so much in your subconscious. I, every week I have amazing transformations with people because we uncover things that they didn't know that was there. And they're like, wow, I, I could never have healed that because I didn't even know it was there. You know, it's, this stuff is revolutionary. It's transformational. All right. So let me just give you an analogy um, again about this, the talk therapy, where we deal it. talk therapy targets the logical conscious mind, where the damage is actually done, where the, the negative thoughts, beliefs, perceptions are held in the subconscious. So let's say that what's broken for, for this, what's damaged is your subconscious. Okay, and you go to the doctor. So we'll compare your, let's say your subconscious is your arm. Okay, and you go to the doctor and you say, I've got a broken arm. And the doctor looks at you and starts to treat your leg. Well, you're going to say, why are you treating my arm, my leg, when it's my arm that's broken? That's, that's the wrong thing. That's the wrong place. Treating my leg, which isn't broken, isn't going to help my arm. And do you see when you look at this in the physical sense, it's so easy to see. And it's the same when you go to your doctor with any emotional or mental health issue. All of it is coming from your subconscious. All of it has a root cause that is causing your subconscious to give your conscious mind a certain message. Your conscious mind can't change what's in your subconscious. So think about this next time. Next time you're thinking about an emotional or a mental health issue. It's your subconscious where you need to do the work. Think of it like your broken arm. You would heal your broken arm. You would do the work on your broken arm. You wouldn't worry about the other parts of your body because they're irrelevant. And that's exactly what's happening here. And if you doubt the truth of that, you I, I mean, you can research this. I don't teach anything that you guys can't then research and validate and look up. Okay, that's, that's a fact, all right? I've spent a fortune learning this stuff. I can package it up for you in a way that makes it easy for you to understand. But if you think I'm talking rubbish at any point, you can just go, go research, leave me your query, leave me your questions, and I'll clarify things for you. But all of this is out there, guys, or all of this information is available to you. Um, I was on a professional seminar this week, and um, prof any of you who are dealing with trauma have probably heard of Bessel van der Kolk. Um, he wrote the book, The Body Keeps the Score. 
brilliant, brilliant book about how trauma is taken on in the body and how we can then resolve that. And as part of this seminar, they were talking about trauma and then they went on to discuss the emotional and the psychological effects of abuse. And he said, he said, we've got pretty good at dealing with trauma. Okay. And we have, it's all about deep relaxation. It's mindfulness. So there's lots of things we can do to help people deal with the trauma of their system. But then he was asked about, but what about the emotional impact? What about the emotional deregulation? Because that's what happens. Our emotions get derailed and we can't regulate ourselves. Uh, mostly because as children, we were so focused on defense that we didn't learn. We, we didn't have enough resources to learn those other functions that would normally be part of our development. And what he said was, this is a really tricky one. He said, and what we have to accept as uh, psychologists, psychotherapists, counselors, is that we don't know. Those of us, he didn't say those of us using talk therapy, those of us in this field, he said, we don't know. We do not yet have an effective way. He said, the trauma is one thing. We can use mindfulness and relaxation to deal with that. We can use yoga. There are lots of um, lots of tools and techniques to focus you on the present, which is how you heal your body from trauma. I totally understand that. He said, but we, we don't have the tools to help people deal with the emotional and the psychological damage. And that's what he said. So I've actually written to him about my work because I don't deal in talk therapy, as you know. I'm dealing with the subconscious. And when we deal with the subconscious and we're dealing with the root of what's really going on, people can heal really rapidly, really quickly. You know, 12 weeks is, is not unusual. There is no need, as far as I'm concerned, for anyone to spend years, even months and months in therapy because the method of healing is there, it's available. It's just not talked about in the mainstream, which is why it's part of my mission this year. Um, I'm actually investing at the moment in a lot of PR and media and things like that over the next six months because I want to make some noise about this. I think it's, I think it's a travesty that so many people are suffering as they do, that these options are not available to them. Even if they've got the money, they're not told. But for people who don't have the money, they are only given this talk therapy option that even those involved are saying isn't really an option other than for someone to talk to. But it's going to struggle to get you a real result. So that's part of what I'll be doing this year. I'm probably way more passionate about that at the moment than even helping people heal. Now, it's kind of like the two really go together, but the making some noise about this and I'd like to think I can influence bringing some change about. I know it's a big job, but if we don't speak out at all, we can't get anything done. So that's what I'm doing. Um, okay, so now that I've told you that, the five major shifts that you need to make to heal from your CPTSD, the trauma of your abuse in the next 12 weeks. So really, it's up to you. I've told you what I believe the shifts are. There are others for sure. But these are the five that I know that anyone who works with me at all will need to make. In the beginning, before we start, these are the things you need to understand. These are the things you need to understand to get you to choose to work with me, to get you to choose to get on to get onto a call with me, onto a Zoom session, a free 30-minute session where we talk about where you are at, where you want to get to, and I help you craft this 12-week, this step-by-step -step strategy to get you from where you are now to where you want to be. 12 life-changing weeks. So if you'd like to do that, I'm going to put the link to my calendar in, in the comments. And really, the choice is up to you. I've given you the information that you need. And this ties back to what we said. I information doesn't heal. Action 
on the information is what heals. And it really is up to you. I've got this brand new program that I've put together. Um, it's like a 12 week absolute immersion. It's, it's impossible to not be totally changed by what I've put together if you choose to take part in it. So I've given you the information. Obviously you can dismiss it, you can think it's rubbish. Not everyone likes what I do, not everyone likes me. That's, that's fine. You know, I'm right for the right people. So if you think that I'm right for you, and if you think that I could really, really help you to heal finally from the trauma of your past abuse, to help you get back to the person that you really are, even if you've never known who you really are, and if you've suffered abuse, a childhood, then that's a very difficult thing. Your whole sense of self, your identity was erased and eroded for a reason. So if you like the sound of what I've said here, if you can see the sense in this and you think, yes, I would love to find out more about this, then just wait for me to put my link in the comments, book in for a session with me. It's a 30 minute session via Zoom, which is a conferencing platform. Everything you need to join will be sent to you. It's one-on-one, -on -one. it's you and I. I give you my time to work out if we're a fit and if I can help you. If I can help you to heal and to craft for yourself and to then live the life and to have the future that you desire and truly deserve. So if I can do that for you, that's why I'm here. That's why I love to do this work. I just live for the results and the changes.